It's episode 540 of the Locked on Texas Rangers podcast. On today's podcast, I'm breaking down what happened in the top 30 ranking of prospects. I'm talking with Grant Schiller. I am your host, Bryce Paddock. Of course, if you're not already, go ahead and follow me on Twitter at Bryce Paddock. Follow the show at Locked on Rangers and subscribe on YouTube. been covering the Texas Rangers since the 2014 season. Seen a lot of stuff. Seen a lot of good stuff. Seen a lot of bad stuff. And I am... So happy to announce that there's actually some news that's happening. A lot of great stuff, a lot of exciting stuff that's coming up on this episode of Locked on Rangers. Without further ado, let's get into it. You are Locked on Rangers, your daily Texas Rangers podcast, part of the Locked on Podcast Network, your team every day. You are locked on to the Texas Rangers. I am here to talk about some breaking developments. I will be talking with Grant Schiller a little later on in the show, but first I wanted to get to all these things that are happening in Major League Baseball. There is a new thing that has come out today uh, no spring training games will be played until march 5th major league baseball officially announced in a statement that all games would be delayed until or at least the start of spring training would be delayed until at least march 5th which you know seemed obvious since they don't have an agreement in place and the major leaguers aren't going there yet but mlb spring or milb minor leagues baseball spring training will be starting on monday as well and players in positions of power in the union as well as ownership representative i think actual owners several actual owners not all the owners and not all the people on the high whatever high council of mlb pa are going to go to these meetings but they're going to be every single day in the coming weeks starting on monday until they get a deal done major league baseball and and i think the players association also agreed that basically in order for the season to start on time There is a ticking clock, which we already knew, and they should have been doing this much earlier so that we could actually have spring training. Pitchers and catchers could have already been reported. They could have already been in Arizona or Florida or wherever the heck they go. Um, I guess those are literally just the two (laughs) destinations, but we don't have that. And we don't have pitchers and catchers reporting. We don't have pictures of spring training and, you know, hoping that it's baseball season. But anyway, the deadline is the, the last day of February, February 28th is the last day to get a deal done without the season starting. MLBPA countered and said, hey, if we don't get the season started on time, you're not getting your expanded playoffs. We're just not doing that. And that is the biggest sticking point. That is the biggest thing that ownership wants is an expanded playoff of some nature. To They want a very expanded playoff. Probably not. I don't think their proposal, initial proposal was quite as big as the 2020 expanded playoff where it felt like literally everybody got in, which I didn't love. I did like there being more baseball, but I didn't love how it rewarded teams that were mediocre. And a lot of mediocre teams beat some actually good and deserving teams. And that was weird and not great. And baseball is the <laughs> the streakiest sport out there. So I think it should definitely be this the sport that rewards the best regular season the most, more than any other professional league in North America, I think. But yeah, it's looking like those two developments are the biggest things that are happening right now. And ownership and players are finally going to meet, which they should have been meeting since at least the middle of January. They had a meeting, I believe it was yesterday or sometime this week that lasted 15 minutes, which why are you even meeting if you just, the meeting lasts 15 minutes? There's literally barely enough time to sit there, take a drink of water, say like, two things, two statements per side, and then just like shake hands and leave. Like at that point, it's a, like this email could, this meeting could have literally been an email, maybe two emails, probably just one email. Because if you're meeting for 15 minutes, why are you flying all over the country just to meet for 15 minutes? But now they're committed. They're going to actually, hopefully they said they're going to meet every day. I didn't say how long they're going to meet for every day. Hopefully it'll be extended bargaining sessions. There's extreme time pressure on this now, which they didn't quite have. Obviously, not a lot of trades get done until the trade deadline. Not a lot of things happen until deadlines. So those deadlines are coming quick. And just like the rest of us, MOB owners and MOB players are also procrastinators. You know, sometimes you think, man, these guys are, you know, so much better at all these things. And either they're so different. They live in another world. And then you're like, oh, yeah, they didn't do a dang thing until they had an actual deadline staring them in the face and slapping them in the mouth. Oh, Okay, we're not we're not so different, you and I, MLB owners and MLB Players Association. Um, it's kind of nice to see that. But 
hopefully that pressure will actually lead to getting a deal done and a good deal, literally for both sides, more importantly for the players because they have been absolutely screwed the last few deals, collective bargaining-wise, and it is time that they finally started looking out for players. Also, in case you missed it, Major League owners also asked for minor league players to not be paid during spring training because, and I quote, they get the most benefit out of it. Are you freaking kidding me, owners? Are you freaking kidding me? You literally just made a proposal to announce you had to provide housing for all your minor leaguers. And then, not six months later, you're like, eh, what if we didn't pay them for spring training? What if we didn't pay them for the time that they're actually working, getting ready to work? Because we're already not paying them for the months that they're off, even though they're training, getting better for the regular season. And, you know, a lot of them having to work side jobs and whatever. It's just like ownership. It, it, the slam dunk to be likable is right there. Just throw it down. Dunk the ball. Please, God, dunk the ball. It's so easy to do that. And I would just like to see you do it. So those are the updates that are happening now. But first, I want to tell you, I'm going to get to my talk with, with Grant. But first, this episode is brought to you by Bilt Bar. Now, this is the time of year I've pretty much given up on all my New Year's resolutions, but I'm sticking to the resolution to eat right thanks to Built Bar. It makes it easy. They're so delicious. They're so good for you. They are so jam-packed with nutrients and all kinds of great stuff that you want in your protein bar. They also have Built Bar Puffs. If you tried these, if you haven't, you're missing out on one of the new best things that Built Bar does. They're the first ever protein-infused marshmallow. They're fluffy. They're marshmallowy. They're not just a protein bar. They are a delicious treat and they are covered in 100 percent chocolate puffs are a fan favorite with some incredible flavors yummy cinnamony churro coconut marshmallow banana cream pie so good they're going to be your new favorite all bars are covered in 100 percent chocolate yes that includes the puffs 100 percent real chocolate so you know at built bar they're all about taste and you know they make delicious taste first and they're also healthy but you know you gotta taste them you gotta as much as i can use adjectives and words to describe how great these built bars are you really got to try them for yourself to to see that i am i am not full of it i am telling the god's honest truth about how great these built bars are so if you want to take me at my word go to built Dot com Use promo code LOCKED15 and get 15% off your order. Use promo code LOCKED15 for 15% off at Built.com. And now, my talk with Grant Schiller. You are locked onto the Texas Rangers. We are talking prospects, talking baseball. I'm your host, Bryce Patrick. And thank you guys so much for making Locked On Rangers your first listen of the day. If you're not already, go ahead and follow me on Twitter at Bryce Patrick. Follow the show at Locked On Rangers and subscribe on YouTube or wherever you get your podcasts. Joining me today is prospect expert, pitching analyst, baseball generally enthusiast, less enthused at the moment because of labor negotiations, but still enthused in general about baseball. Grant Schiller, the OG Shill. How you doing, buddy? I'm doing good. Um, just got back from a little vacation. Uh, D1 college baseball starts this weekend. So regardless of, you know, MLB and Manfred and all that, there is baseball starting up. Uh, I just watched a couple live college baseball games uh, okay. on Monday. So, you know, there's there's baseball to be excited about, Mike, even if it's not Rangers. There is baseball that's happening, and it is very exciting. Um, I wanted to plug real quick a piece by Evan Grant. Speaking of college baseball, he went to Lubbock to write about all things like Texas Tech for like, I don't know, a week or two, and he got like four different big features that he did. And the last one, I I think it's the last one. He might be pulling out some other ones. Um, But the most recent one that he's put out is about the young and younger um, Josh Young okay. and his younger brother, Jace, which there's some fun little anecdotes there. You should go read on uh, the Dallas Morning News website. One of them was that Josh bought a home in Lubbock and was like cooking for Jace, went hanging out while he was uh, injured as well, which is just really like, I don't know, really wholesome stuff. And uh, I would just love for those two to be Rangers infielders for a long time. Absolutely mashing bombs. Can I ask you a quick, uh, very off topic tech baseball question? You can. Um, so Micah Dallas, tech pitcher, transferred to AM. He's gonna be the number two starter this year. What should I be expecting? He, oh my god, it feels like he's been in baseball for forever because I saw him I remember I'm pretty sure he was still there when I was there. So he's been there for a while. He might have been like just like a little baby freshman, but like he's been there for quite a while. Um 
pretty lively fastball. I think he's got a slider and a changeup as well. Um, but the fastball is is really good from what I remember. Changeup, meh. I think mainly fastball, slider. Um, okay. Pretty solid fastball. When he's on, he's really stinking good. Um, pretty good at commanding the zone. But uh, I did not know that he left, and that's a real bummer because he was pretty good while he okay. was at Tech. Okay. So, good arm. Should, good arm. Could be an SEC weekend arm. Incons- inconsistent. Uh, okay. And consistent is, is a big problem, I think, in injuries as well. Anyway, we're here to talk about prospects, which I guess those guys technically qualify because they are draft prospects. I don't – I guess him. We literally well, – Jace and and Micah Dallas, both Texas Tech legends. But I have finally unveiled all 30 of my top prospects. And at the time that I was recording it, there was literally no other publication, no other major publication. Maybe there was some, like, I don't know, random site that rank, ranked Rangers prospects. But literally everywhere had – had uh, Jack Leiter above Josh Young, and I'm like, uh-huh. everybody, everybody believes it. And, and some of them were pretty significant like differences of, of how high they had him on their top 100 or whatever. But Kylie, Kylie McDaniel of ESPN, uh, I've always said that he is my favorite uh, prospect evaluator. Always, always been a big Kylie fan. I mean, I really have, but I haven't always said he's my favorite. But I mean, he's, he's always been really good and consistent and trustworthy on things like this. And and he, he's right there with me. He believes that Josh Young should be ranked a little bit higher than Jack Leiter, which is uh, just wonderful. Uh, he had he had him way up there, higher than, I believe, anybody else in his top 100. I keep saying this because I'm scrolling, and I keep scrolling and not seeing it. All right, he's behind. Uh, there we go. Actually, right behind two third basemen, uh, Jordan Walker at 17 of the Cardinals, and also Nolan Gorman of third baseman at 18 of the Cardinals, but then at 19 top 20, he has top 20 overall. Um, and he said he reminded him of Kyle Seeger, which I'm like, you know what? I kind of, a right-handed Kyle Seeger, which I think is a little better than that. I said, which is not a super like confidence inspiring, but I said pre-injury Hank Blaylock, because that was a guy who had like about an 850 to 870 OPS, hit about 30 bombs, played pretty decent, like okay defense at third base, and um, was and walked a, a pretty pretty good bit. And I feel like, does that seem like a fair comp? I mean, maybe Blaylock hit for a little more power than... It, yeah, that's what I was going to say. I think Blaylock but, had more power. He also, I think, didn't have quite as advanced an approach. Um, I mean, obviously I was very young when Blaylock was coming up, but the Blaylock I remember was just absolutely swing for the fences all at, the time. At his peak, he hit 300 and had like a, I think a 370 in it. Cause he had two all-star seasons at 22 mm-hmm. and 23. Then the injuries really hit and he started to go downhill. Mm-hmm. But um, he had like a 870 ish OPS and like a, a 350 to 370 OBP, which I think feels about accurate for, for young. Yeah. Um, that yeah. I can see that a bit much though. Yeah, I could see the uh, average no BP being about his his o three o four seasons being about what Young might be able to do. Slugging maybe a little bit lower than what Blaylock provided. Um, Blaylock was also a really good defensive player, which I don't know that Young will be. Um, so I, I I'd probably lean more, I guess, towards the maybe the Seager comp. Although again, Seager's probably a better defender over there than Young is. So I don't know that he's going to be the five one player Blaylock was at his peak, or that Seager was at his peak. Um, but if he turns out to be either of those guys, obviously pre-injury Blaylock, that'd be fantastic. Yeah, and him mashing in Arlington, um, if he could get any of that magic. Well, that's uh, what I was gonna say. Kyle Seager without <laughs> facing the Rangers, I don't know how much how much value that provides you. Well, I mean, we got one Seager who clearly slugs in Arlington, so uh, put a a comp no, to his brother right there. That's true. It well, I mean, Corey slugs, slugs in Arlington too. Yeah, no, that's what I was saying. We got okay. we got the Corey Seager, and then we, we couldn't get Kyle Seager because his wife told everyone that he retired. Which is still a we- like like okay, I get it. Like, it, but that's just like a super weird way to announce your retirement. It's like, all right, my wife's gonna tweet something. Like, you might as well have like the club say something. Like, because if you're not gonna post on your own social media, which I don't know that he has any, which is probably a good move for any professional sports player. Like, it's or just anybody you, in general. I mean, yeah, probably. But especially if you're a professional athlete, I, unless you have somebody running it for you, which you probably should, so that you don't look at all the mean things that people say, then I think that's the move. But I don't know. I guess my, he must be a big wife guy. So um, 
congrats to his wife for for breaking that scoop uh really really great scoop but Man, that was just a lot of vindication because I felt so out there on a limb. Like we've talked about it before and you're like, I get it. Uh-huh. It's defensible. But like when literally nobody else is doing it, I'm like, well, I'm just out here with my whole butt on the line. And everyone is probably thinking, oh, he's a tech to tech guy. Blah, 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 blah. And I'm like, I mean, part of it is that mainly just because I got to see him at tech. I've seen him uh-huh. for so many years. And also he's a position player. Like just inherently, like they should probably be higher because... There's no such thing as a pitching prospect, even one that's Jack Leiter. Like, it's just, I've been burned too many times before, but I felt extremely vindicated. Thank you, Kylie McDaniel, if you're listening. Um, feel free to come on the show and, and talk about how right I am um, anytime, anyplace. <laughs> but I guess that's why I have you on here, to tell people how right I am. <laughs> <coughs> or something like that. I don't know. This episode is brought to you by Bet Online. Football season might be over, but basketball is in full steam for both pro and college hoops. From all the latest odds, totals, player performance props, to where to fire, the next fired coach is going to land, BetOnline.net is the number one spot for all your sports betting needs. BetOnline remains the best spot for all of your sports scores, podcasts, and news this season. And it's not just basketball. BetOnline.net is your source for hockey, boxing, UFC odds, right to Olympics coverage and information. Head to the website today or use your mobile device to learn more about the trends in action. Bet online, where the game starts. I can I can take Kylie's spot. Um, I don't agree with you. I'd have lighter one, but that being said, taking Kylie's spot, you're totally right. <laughs> like the thing is, it's it's because Josh Young is literally like as soon as the big league season starts happening, he's gonna be a big leaguer. And Jack yeah. Leiter has not thrown a single pitch in the minor league. No, I mean, I totally get it. Yeah. Uh, it's just like once he – if Jack Leiter had, like, two starts at, like, high A or whatever, and they're both incredible, I'd be like, all right, switch it, switch it. <laughs> because maybe that will be uh, happening before the time the major league season starts because it's, it's looking like that, which just sucks. Um, and it bums me out. I don't really want to talk about it. But the top ten was uh, – I felt really good about it. I the the bottom 15 i'm like ugh, i really tussled with like who was even in there and like where i put some can, of them but can, tough. I, can i guess uh uh number one trace lore number two jack bulger um number three i don't know did you throw uh, it's hard to even say i mean is it scott engler uh mason englert mm, okay gotcha <laughs> <laughs> For those of you who haven't looked listened to that episode yet, um, first off, what are you doing? But my top ten was number one. We're starting with number t- one and going to ten. Josh Young, Jack Leiter, Cole Wynn, Ezekiel Duran, Owen White, Justin Foscue, Evan Carter, Josh H. Smith, Luis and Helicuna, and Dustin Harris. Um, also, since then, uh, what's his face? Uh, Keith Law. Yes, Mr. What's-His-Face. Keith Laws came out with his rankings. He also had a uh, fighter above Young. But the one that I really I really uh, had some issue with is... I mean, he did have Foskey in the right place. He had Duran all the way at 8 and Zavala at 9, which was mm-hmm. confusing. Uh, I believe Vanasco, Vanasco was just outside the top 10. He was at 11. Roby was, a, was at uh, 12. He had Sam Huff at 13, which I felt like was way too high. Look, but he had, Cody, I mean, he had Cody Bradford at 15, above Evan Carter, who he had at 16, and I'm like... I'm I'm not here to spread hate, but Keith Law is not somebody I pay attention to. <laughs> I, I've seen enough of his ra- rankings, enough of his scouting reports, to know I don't value them. Like, full stop. Just I, I, I see a ranking from him, I just move on. Yeah, and normally I would, but... I don't think Jimmy Newberg is writing for the Athletic anymore. I'm pretty sure mm-hmm. he's at um, uh, Oh Mike Pellucci, D Magazine. Uh, D Mag- D Magazine. Um, yeah. Mike would kill me if he was listening to this episode because I literally had him on the show to talk about D Magazine and how great it is. Uh, uh, shout out to D Magazine and Mike Pellucci and uh, Jamie Newberg. Jamie Newberg, who knows the system uh, just more than a little bit better than Keith Law. But, I mean, great. It's really difficult to know 30 systems. It anywhere. is. It's very, very difficult. So doing it as a solo solo person that like, is so impossible that's why i like that, the that's baseball. why you should 
know yourself. Baseball America and Baseball Perfectus. Right. Those are the ones who I'm like, all right, I really value those guys. Right. Though BP, I think some of their valuations on Texas players were a little misguided because they had Foscue at 50 in their top 101. And I was like, really? that, I was like that feels like really high. Because they also had him above Cole Wynn, and I'm like, that... Yeah, I don't agree. Wynn was pretty universally, I'm, I'm pretty sure, like, top... He's def- he's in top 100 basically everywhere. Um, I think he was, like, in the 80s or something for for BP in their top 100, but, like... It's so cool, like, talking about the system like that again. Because, I mean, the last couple of years, it's been, like, you get maybe one, maybe two guys that you feel really good uh-huh. that are in the top 100. I mean... And they're really? the back end. It's like Young's gonna be like top eighty-ish, and then maybe Sam Huff sneaks onto the onto the very back end of the list. Yeah, I think they had three in the top one hundred and one of last year's BP, and that even felt like all right. That with Leodi, yeah, that, yeah, it was like Leodi was there, Young was there, and I believe Huff was there as well. And like other than that, it was like all right. There's not really all that much that's there, and. Which sucks when you're a team that's terrible and also doesn't have anybody who you can look to. It's like, that guy. That guy could be a really stinking good mm-hmm. big leader one day. And now there's quite a few guys in this system. And there's a whole lot of guys in this system who are like, that guy's going to be a big leader in some capacity and contribute. I don't know if he's going to be a star, but like that guy's going to be a big leader. And that's going to do it for part one of my talk with Grant. I get a little bit more into my top 30 um, a little bit more about where different prospects are going to end up chaining positions. That's some uh, really interesting talk about some of the guys in the middle infield at the top of the system that there's some really pressing questions because clearly second base and shortstop are filled for uh, the pretty immediate future and probably also for the long term with these two stars the Rangers have up the middle. So lots of fun stuff coming up on part two of my talk that will be out tomorrow. But Thank you guys so much for listening, and until next time, don't forget to enjoy baseball.